Hey, <laughs> look who's back. Our six funny little aliens here. So we're going to probably be working with triangles that have six pieces again. Three angles of three sides. But uh, previous lesson, every time we had a triangle, we were so lucky it had a 90 degree angle. So we could use the Pythagorean theorem and we can use Sokotoa. Well, what if we're not so lucky? So here comes, ready or not, the law of signs. So we're adding one new tool today and one new tool next time. All right, because if I don't have a right angle, I can't use the Pythagorean theorem. I can't use Sokotoa. I have to have other tools I can go to. So today, the law of signs will help us solve a triangle Next lesson, the law of cosines will help us solve a right triangle. Now notice even though we're using the letters A, B, and C, C is not a right angle and lowercase c is not a hypotenuse, right? There's no hypotenuse, there are no legs, they're just sides, because it's a random triangle, it's not a right triangle. So the ratio of the sine of angle A to side A is the same as the ratio of the sine of angle B to side B. And that's the same as the ratio of the sine of angle C to side C. Now, I'm not going to use all three ratios at once. I'm only going to use any two of them at a time. You'll see in the examples how that works. And of course, it says it can be written in either of the following forms. So this is the second way of doing it. I could put the side in the numerator and the sine of the angle in the denominator. Right? If I'm looking for one of the angles to make it easier to work with this, I want the sine in the numerator. So if, for example, if I'm looking for angle C, I want the sine of C in the numerator. But if I want to say, oh, let's pretend I'm looking for side B, then I'd want to see that lowercase b in the numerator. So what I'm looking for, I usually put in the numerator. And again, I only need two ratios for proportion. Right, so I could just use sine of a over lowercase a equals sine of b over lowercase b. Or I could do something like lowercase a over sine of a equals lowercase c over sine of c. Right, I only need two ratios for a proportion. I'm never going to write down all three at once. And of course, the only way we can solve a proportion is if we know three of the four terms. So I have to know three of the four pieces to make this thing work. Okay, so this time we're gonna actually start with a picture. Side B is 13, side A is 16, Angle A is 40 degrees. 
cannot use the Pythagorean theorem to get the missing side because there's no right angle. I cannot use Sokotoa because there's no right angle. So I got to go for the law of sines. And which piece should I go for first? Well, I know capital A. I know lowercase a. I know lowercase b. So what I would be missing from a proportion would be capital letter B. Right? I need to find angle B because I know A, little a, and little b. So capital B is where I'm going. And again, because I want to find angle B, I'm going to put sine of B in the numerator. Right? I know three of those four terms. I know lowercase b is 13. I know lowercase a is 16 because the sides are always across from their corresponding angles. And I know sine of a is going to be sine of 40. Now, if I multiply both sides of the equation by 13, I'll get sine of b by itself. It's very important that I show step-by-step -step work up to this point before I reach for that calculator. Now, of course, at this juncture, I'm going to have to figure out the sine of 40 degrees. That's going to have to get multiplied by 13, and then that result's going to be divided by 16. So I figured out the sine of 40 degrees. That was about 0.64. I multiplied that by 13, and I came out to be about 8.35. Then I divided that by 16, and I get about 0.52. Hmm, that seems like a really tiny angle. Angle A is 40 degrees, angle B is 0.5. Oh, wait a minute, we've not found angle B, have we? We found the sine of angle B. If I just want angle B, I need to find the inverse sine of that crazy 0 0.52. But again, on paper, please show what buttons you're pushing on the calculator. Don't just push buttons on the calculator and write down numbers. Right on paper, you should demonstrate first what buttons you will push before you push the buttons. So angle B is approximately 31.5 degrees. Of course, I know the three angles have to add up to 180. So if I know two angles, the quickest way of getting that third is just to have them add up. But again, please don't just put 108.5 on your paper or put 108.5 in the picture. Show that you knew you had to add the three angles together and show what numbers you're going to use. Well, there's a one side that's still missing, so what can I do? Well, only missing piece is side C. Now, I don't have to use A over sine of A. I could have used B over sine of B. But I have to have C over sine of C because I'm looking for C. So sine of C, of course, would be sine of 108.5. Side A, of course, is just 16. I'll need sine of 40. Multiply both sides by the sine of 108.5, so C is now isolated, right? Show the algebra that enables you to isolate the variable C. Now I can go grab a calculator. I can figure out the sine of 108.5. I can multiply that by 16. 
I can divide that by the sine of 40. So C is about 23.6 in length. Okay. What did we used to do with proofs? We've got side side angle here. Since side side angle was a valid method with proofs, side side angle is a valid way we can solve a triangle. Because remember, I said most of the time, if we give you three pieces, you can find the other three. Well, they also line up with our valid methods of proofs, right? If side side angle is good enough for a proof, side side angle is good enough to solve a triangle. All right? The law of sines is going to work with any triangle that is angle angle side or angle side angle in addition to our side side angle. That's because if we know two angles, we really know all three. And we won't even have to use the inverse sine function. All right, so this is an angle side angle situation. Because I know the side between those two angles. And whether it's angle side angle or angle angle side, the first step is going to be really easy. You just got to find that third angle. They got to add up to 180. So whether it's angle side angle or angle angle side, step number one is you find the missing angle. And now from here on out, it's identical because you know all three angles and you know one side. And I won't have to use inverse sine because we already know the angles. But I will have to use the law of sines twice, once to find side B, wants to find side C. And in each case, I'm going to use A over sine of A because that's the pair I know. I know 10 is the side that goes with the angle of 29 degrees. So that's the ratio I'm going to use each time. I'll take B compared to sine of 70 equals 10 compared to the sine of 29. I'll also take C compared to the sine of 81 equals 10 compared to the sine of 29. Mm -hmm. More room we need. Okay, multiply both sides by sine of 70 degrees. So now I know how to find lowercase b, sine of 70, multiplied by 10, divided by sine of 29, comes out to about 19.4. I can add that to my picture. For side c, well, it looks like I don't want that sine of 81 degrees there. Divide both sides by sine of 80, I'm sorry, multiply both sides by sine of 81 degrees. So now I can take sine of 81, figure that out, multiply by 10, finally divide by sine of 29 degrees. And we get about 20.4. I can add that to my diagram. So again, we started with three pieces. We now know all six. Uh-oh. Hmm, I wonder what I should do first. 
They just gave me some numbers here. Hmm. Oh, that's right. If I'm just given a list of information, I should first draw a picture. And I'll say, oh, look, it's angle, angle, side. Because I know consecutive angles in the side we know is not the side between those consecutive angles. But it's just like what we did before. The first step is going to be knowing those angles have to add up to 180. So I'm going to show that I understand that 30 degrees plus 66 degrees plus angle C makes 180 degrees. And of course, I can use a calculator if I need to. But I've got to show the comprehension that I know what's going on. That I know that those three angles add up to 180. Don't just magically put down 84 degrees with no explanation of where it came from. Well, I know little a is 7. So I guess i got to find little b and i got to find little c. In each case, I can compare lowercase a to sine of capital A. Because I know little a is 7. I know big A is 30 degrees. So for B, well, I'll multiply each side by sine of 66. That isolates B. I can then grab a calculator and get 12.8. To isolate C, multiply each one by sine of 84. I now have C isolated. Now that I show that I know that I have to take sine of 84, multiply it by 7, and then finally divide by sine of 30, now I will finally grab the calculator, push buttons, and come up with about 13.9. But again, I'm not going to touch that calculator until I have the algebra on paper that verifies what I need to do with the calculator. Now, if you haven't quite noticed yet, with every single one of these, because we're setting up a proportion, we always have to have a ratio of an angle with its corresponding side. So if it's a right triangle, I've got a bunch of tools I can use. If it's not a right triangle, then if I have an angle and a corresponding side, I can use the law of sine. Also, the longest side, 13.9, surprise, surprise, is across from the largest angle of 84 degrees. The shortest side, 7, it's across from the smallest angle, 30 degrees. All right, so that's kind of a, a quick double check to make sure I didn't get too crazy. That doesn't necessarily mean I've got the right answers, but I can do a double check and make sure that what I have kind of makes sense. That if one angle is really smaller than the rest, that the side across from it should look like it's really smaller than the other sides. Or if one angle is outrageously large compared to the others, the side across of it should look like it's kind of big compared to the other sides. I'm not trying to draw this to scale, right? The side where I have the 13.9 doesn't look much longer than the side where I've got the 7, right? I'm not going to get these things drawn to scale. I'm not going to worry about whether or not the angle really looks like a 30 degree angle or if the angle really looks like an 84 degree angle. I just got to make sure it is a triangle and that I've clearly labeled where A, B, and C are so I can get all the corresponding numbers in the correct spots. Again, the worksheet's got very few questions, so please make sure you show some good detailed step by step work. And then with any additional time available today, IXL has a really nice lesson on the law of signs.